Hey guys, how's it going? We're going to do some ribeye steaks tonight and get these going on the griddle. And I've already taken some uh, previous steps. I went ahead and salted the steaks about six hours ago. Did that around noon today. I guess about seven hours now. And then I put them on a wire rack and put them in my fridge open just so they could uh, start to age a little bit. And then once I took the steaks out of the fridge, I've brought them out here now and I've got my griddle piping hot. So I'll show you how that looks now. Uh, my griddle steaming like mad right now because I've got the, the lid closed. And one of the advantages of using one of the Pro Series is you've got the lid that you can do this with. Um, so this is going to be about as hot as you can get it. And you can see the smoke just pour right off of there. Um, so we're going to work pretty quickly up front to try to get these steaks on. So uh, I've got a little bit of olive oil in here. And we're going to put that right onto the griddle and throw the steaks right on. Okay, so my hot zones, my hottest zones are right through the middle right here. So that's where the focus of the steak is gonna be in those hot zones. Um, you can see the, the darkness of the steak. It started to really turn dark because um, being out in the open air inside the fridge, um, I've left these outside for about an hour to be able to bring them to room temperature. Um, and when you add salt to it, um, you can see that you'll start to get these lines through that it's starting to open up the pores of the steak. And that's how you know it's really gonna be a good steak and ready to go. So I'm gonna take a little bit of oil and put that on there, and then we're gonna put the steak right in that oil. And you should hear a quick sizzle on that. And we're trying to get a quick sear in this, as hot as we can get it. Try to get that first sear all the way across there. The whole goal to a steak is to try to trap the moisture inside. Uh, to keep as much of the juices in there and let the juices work for you so it makes a very flavorful steak. So that's kind of our goal today is to go ahead and get that that way. Uh, if you guys got questions, let me know. Um, yeah, Roberto, I'm just using salt right now on the first layer. Um, in culinary school, I learned that if you use pepper and put pepper down right away, the pepper actually burns and then that can distract from the taste of what you taste. So we've used just salt only on the first side. And once I flip it, that's when I'll start getting into a little bit of the, uh, uh, I've actually got a Blackstone Steakhouse seasoning that we're gonna use today. So that's kind of our goal of what we're gonna do there. Yeah, if you guys got questions, feel free to ask. Uh, one thing I can tell you is that uh, with the Pro Series, um, I decided that I needed to try to block some wind. So I ended up buying the uh, the wind guards you can see down here and I couldn't get all the wind guards all the way around uh, the Blackstone wind guards because it doesn't fit on the back of my grill because of my lid so if you're planning on doing that um, just be aware of that but one of the reasons why I wanted them is because I wanted to get this griddle as hot as I can get it this is about 700 degrees when we started off today um, I could only get to about 625 without the wind guards with the wind guards it's trapping the heat inside the griddle and I'm able to get my griddle a little bit hotter. So we're actually ready to turn these over this quick. Um, if you take your spatula, you can actually push on it a little bit. And if it's sticking some, you know it's not ready. So we can see that these are moving. So we're gonna give these a flip. So what I like to do when I flip it, I add a little oil on top of my steak. And then we're gonna try to flip this to a new section. Because I'm right here, I'm gonna flip it to about here. Cause I want that to make sure it's as hot as I can get it in the new zone that I flipped to. Right now, a lot of that temperature is cooling down there because that steak is sitting right there. In fact, I'll flip it here, it's a little bit hotter. There we go. So you can see just how dark that is. It's got a nice solid sear on there. Um, it's perfect. Teddy, how do you like your ribeyes cooked, man? Uh, no, Alice, I've got this as hot as I can get it right now. All right, so now what I do, since I flipped it over, I've got a little bit of butter that I'm going to use. And because it's still hot on this side, this butter is going to melt for me. I don't have to do a bunch of work. All 
and then we'll just rub that around on the top of the steak a little bit. I cook my steaks to about a medium temperature, a uh, little more on the mid-rare side, but I like a good medium steak. And we're going to let that butter just kind of sit there. Um, another trick is if your butter is not melting super fast, put your spatula on there, let your spatula get hot, and then we'll let that do the work for me. Uh, Justin, we'll probably do about four minutes on each side is going to get a good medium for me. All right, so once I got my spatula hot, you can actually hold that right over the butter, and you can see how quick it melts for you. So a little trick of that. And I'm not pushing down to get any juices out by any means. I'm just putting the hot uh, spatula on top of that. All right, so now we're going to take some of our Blackstone Steakhouse seasoning and just put that right over the top. got a mixture of uh, salt, pepper, garlic, onion. Um, it's a good seasoning. If you haven't picked it up, the Blackstone Steakhouse seasoning is excellent. I suggest it. It's great on baked potatoes too. Sometimes I'll make fries and I'll throw it on fries. Uh, Steven, I actually did a sous vide video a while back um, and it makes a great steak too. I did uh, for about an hour and a half at 135 and then threw them on to sear real quick, about a minute per side when you do it that way. Um, yeah, the Blackstone cooks much faster with the wind guards on it, Amber, um, just because it's got so much more temperature contained. I will say I do feel more heat that comes out the front than I did before just because it's trying to find a way to escape somewhere, so just be prepared for that. Not hot enough that I can't bear it. Um, but in fact, I can even keep some of my tools and stuff down here in the bottom and they're not melting or anything like that. So that's not a problem. Yep, Clint, I'll be happy to show you the cleaning process. It's really simple. Donald patty melts are awesome. I did some patty melts before too. Um, love them. Yep, so we're about done on this side as well. Um, one thing you can do to check temperature, I don't know if anybody's ever shown you this before, but I'll show you again if you, even if you've seen it. If you hold your hand like this, this right here is gonna be rare. If you hold your hand wide open and touch right here, that's what it should feel like on your steak. If you go to first finger to thumb, that should be your medium rare. This should be your medium. That should be your medium well. And this should be your well. It really gets tense and tight right there when you hold your thumb to your pinky. You can try it right now while we're talking about this and you can see it. But I go for middle finger, medium. So if I feel this right here, then I can take my spatula and do the same thing and kind of feel to see how it's doing right in the middle. And I can see that that's about a medium right now. And so that's kind of my goal. This one's a little bit tighter, so it's probably getting just past the medium. That one's perfect. All right, so what I do now, I've got a wire rack. I'm going to put my steaks right here in the wire rack. And then we're going to take them off. And I'm going to let the steaks kind of sit for a few minutes and be able to just absorb those juices back into the steak. You can cut into it right away um, and take a look at them. You can see how beautiful these are. You can cut into them right away if you want to. Um, they'll be very juicy and you'll have juice all over your plate. You'll find that if you hold off for a little bit, um, let them cook for about, or sit there for about five, ten minutes. Um, you'll see that the, the meat actually will relax and pull the juices back inside. And then all of your steaks, every single bite that you get is going to be that much juicier. All right, cleaning process. Super simple. Um, so the first thing I do is I always take my spatula and I just clean off my spatula, try to get it as clean as I can just by scraping. I'm not washing or anything right now, just simple scrape. Sit that to the side and we're gonna take our scraper and just pull everything to the middle. I've already shut all my burners off so my burners are not hot right now. Um, it's not producing any more heat. I've already got enough heat in my griddle. 
And then we just scrape everything back into our magic hole in the back. And then all I do now is I take a little bit of oil, oil the front of it, use my spatula that's clean, and spread that oil around. And just try to get every corner, try to make sure that you're getting all the sides. Um, essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to take away any moisture that could build up. So you're just protecting it, adding a coat of layer onto it. And then the next time I come out here and I turn this on high heat, it's essentially gonna smoke off this layer again for me and create another layer of seasoning before I start to cook. Um, I don't add a ton of oil to my griddle every single time that I cook. It depends on what I'm making. Um, you're not trying to fry food it up by any means. You're just trying to get everything um, lubricated enough that it's not gonna just stick to your griddle. Um, that's it, that's all I do to clean it. It's turned off now, I can close this and it's good to go. You guys have any other questions i'll be happy to help out uh, i love this group i love you all in this group um, i love the fact that we've gotten over eighty thousand members now i think that's absolutely fantastic we started the group actually terry wade started this group um, and i came in when there was about seven or eight members maybe and just asked if i could help jump in um, and we've ran with it um, so excited to see eighty two thousand plus members now almost eighty three thousand today um, yeah, cleaning up is super simple, Sandra. so easy to do. Um, but one thing I do know is that uh, we couldn't have a group like this so successful of a group without all of you guys. Um, Blackstone is an amazing product, and it's all of us being able to throw stuff in there uh, to show us how we cook things that makes all of us better. So that's what I love about it. Um, yeah, I got a cover, Stephen, that I throw over it. Um, I let it cool off a little bit, obviously, before I do any of that. Um, I'll go inside and eat, and then once I'm done eating, I'll jump back out and then uh, cover everything up. Cassie, that's awesome. Which uh, model did you get? Yeah, Nina, anytime. I'm glad we can help out. Um, yeah, super simple ways to cook on a Blackstone. Super easy. <laughs> Dishes are essentially non-existent. Um, so easy to do. Uh, steaks, obviously, you got to throw them on a plate to cut them and stuff like that, but um, very simple. And, yep, so I think I'm going to pop out of here. Um, but I appreciate you guys, like I said before. So feel free to post in the comments how you like your steak cooked, what do you like to do different with your steak. This is a very simple recipe that I did today. Um, a lot of it's in the pre-prep work, just making sure you pull your steak out of the packaging, make sure you get it salted early. That salt's going to penetrate. Um, and then once you've got that salt on there um, and it's penetrated through and created the pores for you, get that to room temperature, throw that on your Blackstone griddle, and it's very easy to do. Yep, Cassie, um, the, the fryers are cool. I don't have one either. Um, I've got a 28 inch. I'd like the 36 inch just for more space. Um, but the fryer is something that I wasn't sure that I needed because I could always buy a separate air fryer if I wanted to, to be able to do stuff like that. Um, so Paul, no wiping it down. Won't it taste like ribeyes? Um, nope, it doesn't. Because what's gonna happen is the next time I come out here, I'm gonna preheat it. It's gonna smoke and add another layer of seasoning for me. And once it adds that other layer of seasoning, um, I'll do a quick scrape sometimes and just add another layer of oil on there if I need to, to get going. Um, if I ever do like eggs or breads, I'll just put a little bit of water on there just to get any seasoning that might still be on there for that flavoring, et cetera, off of there. And then um, I'll cook it that way without any kind of, you know, extra stuff on there that way. Um, yeah, Kevin, the air fryer is cool. It's just, uh, A, a little bit out of my budget, but then also um, I figured that we could always add it on later if we had to, or um, not add it onto the Blackstone, but get one separate that we could use. It'd be convenient to have it all in, um, but just not something I own. Uh, Malachi, there is the four burner 36 inch. So typically when you see a 36 inch, it's gonna have four burners on it. Um, the 28 inch, the, there was a fall special at Walmart last year 
that the 28 inch had three burners that you'll see a lot of people have, but they've now transitioned to a two burner model now. Um, cool things for you guys that haven't seen it. I'm going to pop you off of here and turn you around. Um, a couple of things. One, go to Harbor Freight and pick these up. Super simple. I think I've shown some of you guys this before, uh, but Harbor Freight carries, um, this one right here is a spray can holder. This one right here is just like a, just a tray, but it's perfect to hold some of your stuff. Um, it's on magnets. You can pop it off to clean them super easy. And that's awesome. Um, so make sure you get something like that to be able to hold your stuff in. I love it because I can just grab whichever oil or uh, I've got oil in this one. This one's got peanut oil in it. That's some garlic salt. I've got water. And then um, the Blackstone seasoning that I was using tonight. So I'll trade this out for different things that I'm using. Um, the steaks are doing well. I'm getting ready to take those inside. You can see they look absolutely beautiful, outstanding. And then under here, I've got... Uh, stuff that I keep like there's my lid. I've got some Reynolds wrap some other seasonings things like that And then I can keep plates on here So this is pretty cool So Malachi if you don't buy it with a lid um, like the the hingeable lid um, It's made to be purchased with the lid. I think that you can buy some aftermarket ones uh, But typically it's a flat lid model that you get after that. I don't think there's necessarily a link I can share for that so if you're looking for one with a hingeable lid, you want to purchase it with it that way. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to go with this Pro Series model is because I was looking for something that had the hingeable lid. Uh, Sandy, 36, too big. 28 is perfect for me and my family. Uh, but there's times that I wish that I had the 36 just when I'm doing like hibachi and some things like that. But I agree with you. I think 28 is enough for me. Uh, Patty, I have done pizza. I've done a couple ways. I've done frozen pizzas. Um, I've done them from a frozen state, which isn't the best way to do it. Um, I've done it from a thawed state, and that is a great way to do it because you can keep the temperatures on low. Um, you can even steam a little bit. I put a dome over mine to help melt the cheese a little bit better on top. Uh, flatbreads are amazing. Um, so I suggest buying pre-cooked flatbread. That's something that you can do to make various different things that way. Or uh, like picking up Pillsbury pizza dough, stuff like that. Um, Sarah Sue, awesome. If you order one on Amazon, that's great. If you want to share the link of the what you purchase on Amazon and share that with the group, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, pizza is great. Pizza is awesome to do on here. All right, guys, I'm going to pop out of here and go enjoy these steaks. It's been about long enough. We're going to cut into these. I'll put a picture in the group once I've got those cut. Um, yeah, Malachi Bobley is a good brand to use for sure. So, hey, Kyle, Poster Rubens wants you to get him on there. In fact, if you want to, pop a video on there like I'm doing now. People love to watch and see how we can make things and what we can do. So, all right, guys, I'm going to pop out of here. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later.